NASA engineers are working to bring supersonic travel back to commercial aviation. Just over 70 years after the sound barrier was first broken, the space agency is pushing new boundaries. CBS Evening News anchor Jeff Glor recently broke the sound barrier with NASA to learn about the research. Jeff, good morning. Nora, good morning and happy new year. The only commercial passenger plane that flew faster than sound on a regular basis was the now retired Concorde back in the 70s, 80s and 90s. But the Concorde was only allowed to go that fast over the ocean because supersonic flight creates a big side effect, a loud explosion of energy that is unsettling and can be damaging, a sonic boom. Today, NASA is working to lower the boom so airlines can quietly hit those speeds and cut travel times for everyone in half, seven decades after the first sonic boom. When I dropped them, that was 14 October 1947. I heard the sonic boom, and we knew right there that he had brought in a new Air Force a new supersonic Air Force. Bob Cardenas flew the B-29 bomber that dropped Chuck Yeager's X-1 out of the sky and into the history books. Once we could go beyond the speed of sound, it was the gateway to space. That momentous event 70 years ago did lead to space travel, but not supersonic commercial air travel, mostly because of this. A series of loud booms caused when a supersonic plane creates audio shock waves that sound like bombs, shake the earth, and can even break windows. So they banned supersonic flight over land. NASA aerospace engineer Ed Herring is trying to fix that. NASA One is ready. He and his team are working to lower the blast force and cacophonous sound of sonic booms. We showed that we could reshape the front of the plane and make a quieter boom on the ground. This is completely redesigning planes. Right. They've designed an experimental plane called a low boom flight demonstrator to be built within four years. The ultimate goal, make supersonic commercial flight a reality for everyone. If it takes five or six hours to get from New York to Los Angeles, in 20 years, you hope it takes how long? Half the time, six hour trip will be done a three hour trip. We'll probably be doing 600 miles an hour-ish. Until the demonstrator is done, it falls to NASA test pilots like Nils Larsen to create low booms with today's aircraft. To do that, Larsen has to execute a complicated series of aeronautic contortions with current jets, like this F-18 Hornet. We're going to roll inverted, pull down to 53 degrees nose low, roll out, and then we're going to start a, a dive pull out to about uh, three and a half Gs. Sounds easy. Yeah, it's not that hard. <laughs> so. Got it. On this day, Larson has a new co-pilot. Starting to look like he's fixing to go flying. I need the Nils shades. <laughs> and a mission to show us how low the sonic boom can go. Well, this first run, we're going to go up here to about 35,000 feet. You're giving them the normal boom then? Right, this is the normal boom that, that uh, most airplanes out there would produce today. Back down on the ground, Herring and his microphones are listening and collecting data. We're yep. supersonic. You're right supersonic right now. So we've just completed the normal boom. They're about to try the low sonic booms. But to execute the low boom maneuver, Larson first must climb to 49,000 feet. Roll in three, three two, one. <laughs> That's one copy's mark. So we inverted and then we went down and then we came back up. What did we... Yep, that's exactly it. A few seconds later, back on the ground. Got a boom somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 0.4. Herring's initial data shows about an 85% reduction in the power of the boom. Nice landing, Nils. Thanks. NASA will use their new data to design these new planes, but unlike our flight, that plane will not have to go inverted at 49,000 feet and then dive straight down. Thanks to its shape, it'll create a low boom simply by flying level and really, really fast. Kudos to Jeff Glor. I know they say never say never. I heard that on the Oprah show years ago, never say never. <laughs> but I can say I will never. I ain't never doing that. You say? I would love to do it again. Would I've you? done it once before. That's right. I've gone That's seven right. Gs. It was a right. long time ago. But I am up for that any time. Laura, you have children and a husband. I feel the need, the that. need for speed, as um, they once said in Top Gun. Well, I will be down here cheering you on. No, thank you, but thank you, Jeff Glor. Nice job.